There's a look at the city of Toronto this morning where things right now are dry. Sunrise this morning is going to be at 709, but cloud cover to start and wet weather on the way. Right now we're seeing that already soggy conditions in through London. Saw a little bit of mixing this morning. You can see that just in the final frames. It's going to move its way through in that final frame just into Stratford this morning. A little bit of a rain snow mix as well. Uh, Hamilton starting to see some scattered showers push its way through. Here in Toronto that looks like it's going to push in closer to about 8.30 into the 9 a.m. hour. With that, temperatures right around 4 degrees. We got 3 into Hamilton, 4 over to Niagara Falls. 2 this morning in through London as we take a look into Bancroft at minus 1, minus 3 in Ottawa. Warm air on the way with a southerly flow of winds. Right now, those winds at about 13 kilometers per hour. Winds are going to be gusty, 30 to 50 through the afternoon. Uh, there's a look at your temperature as well. As we mentioned, 4 degrees here in the city of Toronto. As we take a look today, 5. If you're wondering when does the wet weather wrap up, it won't be consistent or persistent, I should say, through the day. Uh, we will see the occasional break, but as we get into about 10.30 tonight, that's when it all wraps up. Tomorrow, clearing skies. Nice looking Thursday at 12. Some morning showers on Friday. Dry through Saturday, Sunday through Monday. We could see some mixing. And daytime highs, only 4 degrees. That's below seasonal. Over to you, Carrie. All right, thanks, Frank. Well, it's getting pretty busy right now. Westbound on the 401, there's a collision just west of Kennedy and the collectors. And it looks like just the right lane is blocked right now, but it is slowing things down uh, pretty significantly on the westbound 401. You'll find that backup right now starts around Morningside. And uh, Express and collectors busy on and off right through to those problems at Kennedy. Uh, also, another uh, issue, this is on the eastbound 401, just before the 400 in the Express. That right lane is partially blocked all due to a stalled vehicle. Uh, the backup isn't too bad right now on the eastbound 401, but it is starting to build from about the 427 over towards the 400, more so in the, the express lanes through that stretch. And as well in Brampton, the intersection of Queen and McLaughlin, that is still closed off in all directions for a collision investigation. I'll send it back downstairs to you, Mel. All right, and updating our breaking news now, a home heavily damaged in a fire in the city's west end. We're gonna take you to a live look at the scene right now the fire is now out but have a look at the aftermath it erupted on wiltshire avenue which is near lansdowne and davenport around 4 30 this morning as you can see heavy damage to both of these semi-detached homes right now there are no reports of any injuries that's the good news the cause is still under investigation they're looking at whether a possible natural gas leak may have been a problem here and it looks like uh, fire crew are just uh, looking inside right now again uh, completely damaged from this fire here in the lansdowne and davenport area originally there were some buses that were being rerouted here as a result they are now back to regular service we'll continue to watch this story meanwhile in pickering watching a fire there where three homes have been damaged and one of them heavily damaged here our tammy sutherland standing by with the possibility of arson being the cause here. Tammy. Uh, that's right, Melanie. We're here on Alwyn Circle in the Brock Road and 401 area. And take a look at the damage here. The roof is actually completely gone on this home. It is gutted. A family of four miraculously made it out okay and actually started to run outside, according to neighbors, knocking on other doors here in the area to alert residents of the fire. Since this is a row, a, a set of row homes here, they're all attached. They wanted to make sure everyone managed to get out okay. It started at about 2.30 this morning, and we spoke to uh, the deputy fire chief about the possible cause. Okay, so you can't say whether or not there's any possible connection to uh, the Valley Farm fire just down the street? No, we cannot. This is still under investigation right now. So. But this fire doesn't appear to be, I mean, your initial evaluation, I mean, suspicious at all? Uh, we haven't interviewed all our uh, first in uh, captains and, and, uh, and crew, but uh, we'll... It's being investigated. Ontario Fire Marshal has been called in to do the investigation. So. Now that fire that we were referring to there, Valley Farm, that happened just a couple of blocks away from here last month. On February 28th, there was a fire that started uh, with a couple of uh, vandals hitting some cars in the area. And then finally, one car that was set on fire, well, that fire spread to a home and then spread to three other townhomes being destroyed in an area where 10 townhomes stood. Uh, no one injured in that 
fire either. But again, police are wondering whether or not this is the work of a fire bug. The fire deputy chief here tells us that the fire marshal's office has been called in to continue this investigation. Mel Nelson, back to you. All right, Tammy, thank you so much for that. A crash in Brampton shutting down the intersection of McLaughlin and Queen. You heard Carrie mention in her traffic reports here. This is a live look at the scene of the two vehicle crash. One of the vehicles here knocking down a light standard, so that is why the intersection is closed off. We can tell you when it comes to injuries, minor to moderate injuries, no life threatening uh, injuries at this point. But problem is, it's going to take some time to get this intersection back up and running. Police have not updated us on a timeline just yet, but again, uh, you can expect this to happen through the morning rush at least. We'll let you know should anything reopen. So far, there's been no word on charges. Now, still in Peel region, police looking for, uh, looking into a number of vehicles that were shot up in a new housing development. This is in the 410 and Beauvaird area in Brampton. The K-9 unit called out to reports of shots fired just after midnight near Kayak Heights and New Pines Trail. There were no injuries reported. No one was in any of those vehicles hit by the bullets. And so far, no suspect information has been released. To East Gwillimbury, after a double stabbing around 12.30 this morning, two men wounded in the area of Mount Albert and Second Concession. Not a whole lot of details here. We don't know much about the victims, but we can tell you one taken to a local hospital, the other to a trauma center here in Toronto. Still waiting in an update on both of their conditions, and so far no word on any charges or arrests. Well, a big victory for tenants of a Parkdale building, a landlord backing off of a decision to raise rent by more than double the legal amount. Now, those plans had more than 50 of his tenants refusing to pay rent since February. For the past two months, tenants have been holding regular protests outside of their King West building. The property owner wanted to raise the rent nearly 3.5%. That is more than double the provincial rent cap of 1.8%. The landlord claimed the increase was justified with hundreds of thousands in building improvements made. But the landlord now says he is backing off the extreme rent hike, much to the delight of tenants.